What's up, YouTube? Check it out. Ed here with TGH, and today we have a special guest. Yes, today we're going to talk ball python basics with Will with Kentuckiana Exotics. Day to day, I want a genetic kind of a lust, it's a love, all the colors and the phase in the man cave, be brain surrounded by exotics. Genetic kind of life, living like moving erotic. Erotic, erotic. Ed, how's it going today? I'm doing good, my friend, hanging over here with my quarantine rack and the little ones. Always glad to hear it. Glad to see you're doing well too, brother. Let's jump right into it. Why are ball pythons one of the best starter reptiles? All right, let's jump right on into it then. So why are ball pythons one of the best starter rare reptiles? This answer kind of is a broad answer, but it's because they're very hardy animals. They can survive in multiple different types of enclosures with a large range of temperature. Um, they typically are very docile, so they're not very aggressive at all. They're easier for kids to handle, and they don't get very big. Um, you get a four or five foot ball python, and you compare it to a 19, 20 foot retic or 15 foot boa or anything else, it's much easier for kids and even adults to handle a five pound, four and a half foot ball python much easier. Um, so that's why people tend to go that direction for their first snakes. It's just because it's easier and more comfortable for them to hold or uh, handle. Not to mention, you know, they are very hardy. They don't have um, to be at an exact temperature, exact humidity at all times. They like ranges. So, wonderful question and I appreciate it. Okay, so you've brought up the temperatures. Let's talk about that. So speaking of the temperatures and humidity, what is the proper temperatures? I've personally found I have snakes that love to sit on their hot spot almost all the time at 90 degrees. I've got others that like to be on their cool end a little more. Um, sitting, and when I check them with temperature gun, a lot of times they're sitting um, between 78 and 82 degrees. So I tend to put a range in my enclosure of about 90 on the hot spot and 76 on the cool spot. That way my snakes have a chance to thermoregulate themselves. And since they are curled blooded, they can choose what temperature they want to be at. Hmm. That's all good. But I wonder, what's the proper humidity? What's the proper humidity? Um, 60% or better is what I would normally say. When you have females, sometimes they want it all the way up to almost 100%, like during the time of year when they're wanting to lay their eggs and stuff, they want really high humidity so they know their eggs are going to do well. But generally, just for average, every day, um, I would say 60 to 70% humidity is a real good spot to be at. My room here currently is at 50% humidity just in the room and then inside my tubs I have it higher than that even and it's usually sitting somewhere between 65 and 70% personally. Well, I've had a lot of people ask me, why do ball pythons have so many different colors and patterns? Oh, why do ball pythons have so many different colors and patterns? So, in almost every species on the planet, there are different mutations, or what we call morphs in the ball python community. Um, and mutations can come in color changes for the, an animal, they can come in pattern changes. Um, some of them do both, like GHI or Gotta Have It darkens an animal up, plus it busies their pattern up. So, you can have something like albino, which there's um, human albinos, snake albinos, and everything else, and they lose all the dark pigment in their skin, so you get mostly an all white and yellow snake. So there's hundreds of mutations out there, and they do all kinds of different things when combined together. So you get snakes of all different colors, all different patterns, 
Each one is unique in its own way, and they're all beautiful. It's one thing I love about ball pythons is that they are so varied in how they look that if you want a really bright snake, you might get a blue-eyed leucistic, which is an all-white snake, or you might decide to change it up and say you want a dark snake and maybe you get a black pastel banana, which is a dark purple and yellow kind of snake, or maybe you just go with um, a GHI Mojave and you go really dark or super cinnamon, which I don't suggest breeding, but a few people do out there and it's almost an all black snake. I wonder, what is the best setup for a ball python? So what is the best setup for a ball python? Well, there's a lot of different ways to answer this question, and we're going to talk about the three main types of enclosures that are used today. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is the one I tend to advocate the least, and that's aquariums. So we all know that fish aquariums have been around forever. They've been used for ball pythons for the last 30, 40 years. With, um, with almost no exception there, they, they were used exclusively for the first 20 years or so. Um, and they do work. Some problems that you have out of aquarium setups is you do want to make sure that you have an under the tank heater that you'll want for all, all different types of setups. And then you'll also want a ceramic heat emitter over the top of it on one side to help keep your hot spot warmer. Um, CHEs basically go in a dome just like the rest um, of the type of setups, but you do not want to use an actual light bulb. It's, um, it emits no light at all. Light can stress out ball pythons, so we try not to use the daylight bulbs or the nightlight bulbs or the red light bulbs. Instead we use CHEs that don't emit light, they just emit heat and put that on the hot side for the snake with a hide there for them to hide and I also put a hide on the cool end as well. Um, other things to keep in mind with aquariums, you have to really basically close off two thirds of the top of an aquarium because they have the mesh tops usually and humidity escapes so fast that it's really hard to control your humidity in an aquarium. Which is why I don't personally um, use them anymore. It's just so hard to keep your humidity where it needs to be. Even when you're spraying it down two, three times, you might have a water bowl, water dish right under the heater and you're still losing your humidity so fast. Next up, we have vivariums. Um, vivariums normally have completely closed off except for on the front, the doors open. Um, so humidity first off isn't going out the top. Again, you're gonna have a under the tank heater on a thermostat on your warm side of the vivarium. And on the cool side, you know, again, we want hides on both ends. The great thing about vivariums is you can do a bioactive um, setup with vivariums which means poop is turned into basically fertilizer for the plants that you have growing in there. You might not have to clean it as often, but they are harder to get started. That's another thing to keep in mind. If you want something easy to start, then you can use a vivarium with fake plants and things of that nature really simply and not have any worries there. And the last setup I'm going to talk about is actually what you see behind me, which is a rack setup. Um, Rack setups are probably the easiest. I'm not gonna say they're the best, but they're the easiest setup. It's really easy to control the humidity in them. It's really easy to control the temperature in them. This again has a under the tank heater, usually heat panels or heat tape that's connected to a thermostat like you see on top of the um, rack up there. And you put your bedding in there, water bowl, and it's really easy to keep all contained humidity and a heat gradient to it. That's very interesting stuff. Is there a downside? So, downside is you don't have as much room height-wise to make it where you can decorate it 
for them to climb and things of that nature. Ball pythons are nocturnal though, so they do like that it's almost always dark in there. Um, where versus a vivarium or aquarium where it's better that we get to see the animals if they're not in their hides. Um, ball pythons stress a little more with light and if they can see changes outside of their enclosure, sometimes it will stress them out even if it's not a change to their home. I can't stress enough how amazing it is to have amazing friends in this amazing community. Yes, amazing, amazing. That's what our community is all about. There are great people in this community just like Will. They're willing to spend their time to spread a little knowledge. Much love to him. Let's throw it back to him and he can go ahead and close us out. See you guys. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. As always, I hope everybody learns something. Be positive and we'll talk at you next time. Have a great one, Ed.